Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shadow is here with me. Um, I'm going to give him a treat uh, to reward him for his cameo here. He's pretty shy. He doesn't like to be on camera too much. But I wanted him to be on camera in order to lighten the mood a little bit because today I want to talk about the upcoming U.S. election. If you happen to be watching this after the election, this is a message based on the words of the Messiah and the Father. So it's a timeless message, even if it's not relevant to the election. But the election that we're dealing with right now, this is an election between the whore and the whoremongerer. So that's what we've got for a democracy. And Shadow, there you go, bud. He's a very good boy. He's got... Uh, the best weight that he's had since I adopted him. They said 17 kilos today. He's, uh, uh, that's about 38 pounds. Uh, he was about 13 kilos when I adopted him. So he's put on a lot of good, healthy weight, just pure muscle. He's doing great and uh, took a blood test today. He's healthy. So that means tomorrow he will be getting snipped, Lord willing. So I wanted to uh, go into a few scriptures here related to the election and also I'm gonna tell you exactly how you should vote you want to know one of the great things about my channel is I'm not a 501 c3 so I have no restrictions on my political speech I'm gonna tell you how I voted and I'm gonna tell you how you should vote and we're gonna go into some scriptures that back that up so uh, to, to give some context to this I've already uh, made my decision. I went, uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, to visit my sister, her husband, uh, and meet uh, their baby for the first time. I am now an uncle for the first time. That's a wonderful thing. I saw my mother when I was out there in, in Denver. Started a new job in Dallas, so you know all sorts of blessings uh, that are going well for me. Um, I do appreciate prayers because I'm still dealing with depression, but there's a lot of good things that I've been blessed with recently. And when I was out there in Dallas, I'm using this piece of paper to represent the, the mail-in ballot. My mom gave me the mail-in ballot for the election. You know, I only ever went in person, I think the first time that I was able to vote, just to be able to say I did, and just to be able to get the sticker that says I voted. But you know what? They put those stickers on the mail-in ballot now. So joke's on you if you think you have to go in for one of those. So anyways, I'm going to tell you right now how I voted and how you need to vote. So if you've got your ballot at home or in preparation for when you go in on election day, pretend this is your ballot, get your pen in your hand, ready to mark that ballot, put the pen down, and do this with your ballot. That is how I voted in the current election, and my ballot is somewhere in a compost pile in the dumps of Denver, Colorado. And that is what I recommend to everyone. I'm going to go into some scriptures for how we got here, what the Messiah says about that, and where we're going. So how did we get here? How did we get in this situation where we're electing people and we have kings. A lot of people take that for granted, like, oh, we need a government to rule over us. <laughs> uh, so 1 Samuel 8 is where I would like to start on this subject. So this is where Israel first got a king. Uh, verse 4, Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came unto Samuel unto Ramah, and they said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel. Samuel must have been a good old-fashioned anarchist, just like you know who. Samuel knew that Israel didn't need a king. I know Israel doesn't need a king. We don't need a king. So the thing displeased Samuel. When they said, give us a king to judge us, and Samuel prayed unto the Lord. Pay attention to what happened here. The Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, 
that I should not reign over them. They've rejected me, said the Lord, that I should not reign over them. Uh, so the initial decision of Israel to demand that they must have a king was something to copy the pagan nation, something that was not part of the father's design. It was entirely sufficient to have judges to make judicial decisions based upon the Torah, and that's as complicated as it had to be. Uh, Moses, uh, you know, at one point Moses requested that there be additional judges so that instead of Moses just handling all the cases by himself, that Moses delegate that authority to other judges, but basically just systems of judges, aka anarchy, would have been sufficient as long as it was based upon the Torah principles. And so anyways, this is how Israel and every other nation from thenceforth uh, had kings and that became established. And so Samuel uh, gave the words of the Lord as a warning uh, to these people. And so, you know, he's going to take your best sons, uh, he's going to take your daughters, uh, he's going to take your fields and vineyards, even the best of them. The tradition continues to the very day. Take the tenth of your seed, the tenth of your sheep. Wouldn't it be lovely if we were only taxed at 10%? I would sign up for that deal if we were only taxed at 10%. Um, but if you think about it, you know, with income taxes and then after your money is taxed on income when you earn it, it's taxed if you save it, it's taxed if you invest it, it's taxed when you spend it, taxed when you give it as an inheritance. I used to work as a financial advisor, so I know there are some exceptions to that rule, but, you know, you, I, I would say that probably 50% of every dollar made ends up being taxed one way or another. You ever paid attention to your phone bill and how much of that is just taxes? Uh, in Colombia, I pay $15 a month and I get unlimited everything. Uh, <laughs> in the United States, I pay more than that and I get absolute trash service. Um, that's a story for another day. But we pay more than 50%, I would estimate, of every dollar that we make in taxes, assuming it's all being properly reported, which, which we, we must do. Uh, I do not recommend tax evasion to anyone. I'm going to go into the Messiah's uh, description on that, but basically 50% plus taxes is what I estimate. If you think I'm wrong, write in the comments what you think the actual tax rate is. But, you know, whether you think it's more or whether think you think it's less, we're pretty deep into slave territory. What do you think that tax rate has to be before you would consider yourself a slave. Something to think about. 10% uh, seems like a pretty good deal. But moving along in the scriptures, uh, through this request made to Samuel, Saul was appointed as king, then follows King David. And we know that in the Davidic line, the Messiah will come. So let's just skip ahead to the Messiah here. Uh, the Messiah, while he was on trial in front of Pilate, Pilate is not the sharpest tool in the shed. Um, Pilate's asking him, uh, what have you done here? And the Messiah says, my kingdom is not of this world. Just as true now as it was then, so whether it's Rome, whether it's Babylon or Egypt or whatever else, his kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. So we are not to fight uh, because it, we're not trying to establish a kingdom right here. Uh, we are instead told by the Messiah, seek first the kingdom of God, the true kingdom, which we know is not an earthly kingdom. This is a spiritual kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uh, if you happen to be new to this channel, righteousness uh, is necessary. We must obey the commandments of the Father. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. I include this to, to, to be defined as, you know, establishing our own political system or trying to fight for independence from the current political system. Whether or not we are slaves in the current system, the system is what the system is. Uh, you know, you were born for such a time as this, as it is written in the book of Esther. So 
it's not up to us to fight against the current system and you know we're not here to be revolutionaries or, or to you know do any violent acts or anything like that i would want to pause here before i continue in why i'm not voting i i'm just curious about the interpretation of that last verse here so if my kingdom were not of this world then would my servants fight so okay obvious enough that we're not going to fight we're not going to have an insurrection we're not going to you know do anything like that we're just going to let the system be and seek first the kingdom regardless of what the system is okay you know during the pandemic i did my civil disobedience i refused to wear the uh, the slave garment on my face and i um you know i tried to live my life the way i had prior and i tried to use my freedom of speech and i've got a strike i see it each and every time up to the present day when i log into my youtube account if i try to post a video it warns me hey you've got a strike be careful what you say so in other words i don't have freedom of speech when i criticized the nonsense that happened in the pandemic um yeah i got a strike from that i got censored so yeah so much for my freedom of speech in the united states uh, I remember multiple times when sheriffs and cops were called on me, times when I couldn't get on a bus, times when I couldn't do certain things that I wanted to do, uh, times when, you know, I, I even tried to go in the grocery store towards the beginning of the, the scamdemic, and I walked into the grocery store without the face diaper, and uh, within about 30 seconds, about, I, I forget if it was three or four, uh, police cars showed up. I agreed to walk away peacefully and okay, I won't go into the grocery store until I get that thing. Well, I wasn't going to get that thing, but I, I just didn't want to have any issues with the police. But yeah, um, I, I remember that. I'm I'm all for forgiving, but I don't I don't forget. If anyone can find me chapter and verse for where the Messiah said forgive and forget, I'll forget. Uh, but he said an awful lot about forgiveness, but. Uh, uh, you know, during the pandemic, I learned that my civil liberties, quote unquote, that my rights that were protected under the inviolable Bill of Rights uh, were really just privileges that could be rescinded at any time. And not only could those privileges be rescinded at any time, but the majority of my neighbors would clap and applaud as those rights were rescinded. Not going to forget that. But I want to stay on topic here and go back into the scriptures here because we saw how we started out with the king. We saw that the kingdom of God is not of this world. And where is this going? In the end times, we see Babylon. Brothers and sisters, uh, you know that I think the United States is Babylon. Some of you disagree. Some of you say it's Israel. Some of you say it's the Vatican. Some of you say it's none of the above. It's something else. Feel free to justify your answers, uh, but I would encourage you all to read through Revelations uh, 17 and 18 that have descriptions of the end times Babylon, which I believe is the United States or, or will uh, be spawned out of the United States. And... I want to highlight this because here's the command we have, come out of her. So in Revelation 18.4, I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and receive not of her plagues. Why would the father say come out of her if there's not something physically that we can remove ourselves from? If somebody wants to say, oh, the Vatican is is Babylon, okay, well, don't go in the Catholic churches. If you want to say Israel is Babylon, don't go to Israel. I think the United States is Babylon. I've heard a few people say, oh, the world system is Babylon, but how can you flee uh, from a world system? So we have a command that we're supposed to come out of her. And I would encourage you all, I'm not going to preach at you why I think it's Babylon, but read through the description of who Babylon is, both in the book of Jeremiah, I think it's chapters 50 and 51, uh, as well as Revelation 17 and 18. If you look at Babylon, it's not just spiritual, 
it's not just physical it's it's also economic you know one of the most famous theories for protestant individuals is that the vatican catholics they're babylon and you know part of the interpretation came from the very true fact that the vatican is seated on seven hills and part of the description of babylon in the bible is that it's going to be on seven hills that's true, but it doesn't take into account any of the economic or military powers of it. Um, you know, the Vatican is not the hammer of the whole earth that has zero military power. The the people who guard the Vatican are, are dressed up like court jesters. You, you really think they're the hammer of the whole earth? So I encourage you to take a look at all the description of who Babylon is. Because I think if you look at the totality of all the descriptions, it either is or will be. The, the United States in its final stage. And I don't think that you can apply as many of those criteria to any other uh, possibility of who could be Babylon. So I'm sure I lost a lot of you at that point, but I would encourage you not to vote in this election. Do you really think that you can look at either of these candidates uh, and, and have dignity saying that you voted for them? Do you have dignity voting for this guy? Do you have dignity voting for this girl? Uh, this guy, by the way, this is uh, from a cover of a book written by C.J. Hopkins. He's currently in jail in Germany right now, if I'm not mistaken, for hate crimes. Uh, what, was, what was his hate crime? His hate crime was criticizing the pandemic. Uh, so, you know, I don't think we've seen the end of the totalitarianism of, of the, the, that sort of regime that happened. In the future, who knows, it might be a climate crisis instead of a pandemic, or it might be election fraud and, uh, you know, uh, some sort of national security issue or terrorism, who knows. Uh, but I don't think that this is going to be the last time in my life that I've had cops called on me for going into a grocery store. Just my intuition. Uh, your rights and your privileges, all the stuff you learned in your civics class, do you really think that that uh, is what you were promised that it was? Do you wanna vote and give legitimacy to this system? And do you think either of these individuals are going to give legitimacy to the system. Seek first the kingdom of heaven, brothers and sisters. Shalom.